I'm going to share my process for making modular dungeons. And for this video, I'm going to start with research and planning. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystique. I make games and I help others to learn game dev. Subscribe now to get game dev tips, tutorials and inspiration. And hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new videos. This tutorial is a multi-part series as we have a lot of different steps to go through to complete the entire level. So I recommend that you check out the other videos in this playlist to understand my thought process and my workflow better. You can find a playlist up here and in the description below. So I've been experimenting with a modular level design system as I'm working on an isometric action roguelike game. There are many ways you can accomplish this, but this is what I've learned so far. First, you gotta define your design guidelines and you can do that by asking some gameplay related questions. For example, will the game be turn-based or real-time? In my case, it's real-time and it's not just the movement of the player but also the combat. This is important because that means that the player could collide with a variety of objects throughout the gameplay. Can enemies or the player characters fall off the level? In my case, nope. I don't want the player to worry about falling off the map as he or she is dodging continuous attacks from enemies. I find that really annoying. What's the camera angle? Can the players manipulate the camera by zooming in and zooming out? Can it move and rotate around? This will determine what is being shown and obviously you can also plan certain objects to not show certain parts. And for that reason, I keep my camera fixed in an isometric position from the top. Are there going to be different levels or heights of the terrain? For me, my terrain will be completely flat so that I don't have to worry about the player and the enemies having to climb up and down. Once the gameplay questions have been answered, from there we can determine the art style. One of the main factors that influences my decision is finding ways to balance between quantity while not compromising on quality. Since I'm the only artist on the team, well, that means that I have to be careful with how many objects I have and at the same time, it has to be presentable. This is where I start to do some research on other low poly games and assets. And I did this by searching via Google Images, Pinterest, Unity Asset Store, and a few other places. By the way, if you're looking to buy some low poly assets, I would recommend you check out the packs made by Sinti Studios. I really like the way they set up their environments. They have some really good details on their models and they cover a variety of genres. Links in the description below. Now coming back to the art style, keep in mind that you can continue to evolve the art style as you play test your game and you build more assets. But I find that having a few rules to start with will greatly eliminate a lot of the guesswork and it just makes things move faster and more efficient too. Another key decision I made is to keep things simple and use flat colors for my textures. So that means I won't be painting little details on my textures and I'll save a lot of time by just focusing on simple block colors. I'll cover my texturing process in a future video. And if you're watching this video in the future and if the video is already done, do check out the playlist that I mentioned earlier. Again, the links are in the description below. The next big step is to actually create blockouts to test the size and spacing of your assets. If you're familiar with my channel, I've explained a lot about block meshes and blockouts in the past. Basically, it's a level design term for drafting out your level using placeholders or temporary objects. You should be able to navigate through your level using your player characters and it should accommodate all the different movements that your character will have like jumping, running and if they can dash and teleport, those things need to be considered early. You should also take note of the dimensions and the spaces required like how many meters a floor should be, how high should a wall be, etc. You can check out the videos I made in the past, link for them are in the description below and up here appearing on screen right now. If you're using Unity, I recommend using ProBuilder. It's a free package that allows you to create 3D models within Unity itself. 
and together with ProGrids, you can snap all your models as well as keeping all the measurements accurate. Links for those videos also in the description below and appearing on the screen right now. As we come to the final step of the planning and research process, we'll need to create an asset list. You can use Google Sheets or Excel to create a spreadsheet to list down every single asset that comes to mind. Some details that you need to include would be their name, the size or dimensions, and which environments they belong to. You can keep updating this list, it's a live document. It not only keeps you organized, as you keep track of each asset to make sure that you don't miss anything but it also helps when working with other team members or when you're outsourcing it to someone else so that everyone can use the same reference ID or naming conventions so that nothing gets confused or overlap each other. If you want a template of the asset list that I'm using, there's a link for it in the description below. All right, in the next video, I'll be going through the modeling process of the modular floor tiles. If you want to download the project files from all my tutorials, you can do that by supporting me on Patreon. You can use my entire library of assets for your projects, and you can participate in polls to vote on which topics I should cover in future videos. Occasionally, you can even vote on certain design decisions for my game project. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to make more games and more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.